Preparing for the interview is an interesting thing for our department and for myself especially. This is our first full-fledged concert for the year 2022 and um, behind the scenes there are many things going on for us to achieve this uh, concert. So I'm actually very excited and I hope the students will feel excited as well. So to all the dancers on stage, um, all the best. Working with DA has been an exciting and fulfilling experience. The students are actually very mature for their age and they have uh, lots of creativity from all of them. So for me, it's also very interesting to hear some ideas that they have and to work with them actually gives me lots of, um, I'll say, sometimes stress but most of the time happiness to work with them. So yeah. It's always challenging, but also rewarding. This is my, I think, my sixth altitude this time. After two years of postponement uh, of COVID, and it's finally back, and it's all. It's, I'm really glad to see it's back, and I'm really glad uh, the students has a uh, platform to to share their their passion in, in contemporary dance. Uh, through that time and altitude. Okay, the difference is we had COVID. We had two years break. And like an engine, uh, once you stop for a certain period of time to rerun the engine, it takes much more effort, it takes uh, dedication, and uh, everything is cut down from budget and everything. And, and, and the amount of dancers. So to restart everything back, it's not an easy task. But uh, after seeing the full run just now, the rehearsal, I have nothing but positive uh, attitude towards this concert, and it's gonna be uh, a really good, a really good one. And uh, I hope the audience uh, will be able to enjoy it together with me on the show day. It's always a, it's always a joy. It's always a privilege to see the students uh, of SIM enjoy themselves uh, on stage and during rehearsal. Uh, it's always fun and stressful at the same time, but mostly fun. Oh yeah, so uh, I've been shooting for SIM DA for the last, I think since 2018, 2017. Um, DA is a very small but tightly group. Um, I guess the dancers uh, have to work through very challenging situations in terms of uh, in terms of training times, etc. Right. So it's it's quite amazing what they have achieved in this short period of time. I don't think I spent enough time with with them. So it's always a bit like sometimes I go. It's the first time I the first the, sh the shoot is the first time I see that their pieces. So it is a lot of I guess going by music and going by the who is doing the choreographing and I can, I can get an idea from there. Another challenge is the venue, of course. Sometimes because the uh, SM uh, theater is a bit tight, so in terms of shooting, I always have to think: uh, Do I want to go as close as possible or as high as possible? So these are some of the practical challenges. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um, the two-year break from live shows for DA, right? Uh, it's both a pro and a con. Uh, con, of course, they, they, they miss out on having a live audience in front of them. That helps a lot when dancers need to project energy. They need to have a focal point, which in this case will be the audience. The pro is that they have actually picked up new skills in terms of doing video productions. And I think right now, I think everyone is a bit more comfortable in front of camera. Everyone knows where to look where to project the energy towards. So I, I think while we are coming back to live shows and maybe video will not be so important right now, but I think this this is a skill that they have and they could use it in the future to do like uh, more hybrid style productions as well. Mm.
Russia, Russia, they don't know why we they had it. I look for we had them a search for we I look for we had them a search for we I said they can't find me now, they don't know why we they had it. 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 Don
Mm, I've always wanted to uh, use the working dance elements of it uh, into a jazz piece because I feel that um, jazz is actually a very uh, versatile uh, dance uh, genre that allows me to um, use elements of other dance style uh, into this piece and this piece focuses more on uh, arms movement uh, using that to bring out the concept and the intention of the dance yeah so this is why I uh, this is what inspired me to mm, for this piece. Um, working with SIM girls, uh, I've been. I think this is my fifth year choreographing for dance arts, and and each time. I do it uh, each time I think the girls grew and uh, the process of the training and the rehearsal uh, always gets uh, smoother even though uh, not everyone uh, dance with me since the start but uh, a good half of the girls in my item were uh, alumni so so it makes it easier to actually uh, work with people who, who have the experience working with me and at the same time uh, can guide the uh, new dancers who have not worked with me uh, before mm. The audio you'll be hearing at the start of the dance actually comes from a cosmetic brand ad. Um, a lot of cosmetic brands like to use women and women's bodies to sell their products. Sometimes they use women's bodies respectfully and other times the opposite. Um, which really got me thinking about what we women go through to make ourselves look good and beautiful to society. So my piece explores the questions on what is beautiful. It is a jazz dance that explores the lines our bodies can create and how the added challenge of wearing heels can affect the different dancers' emotions and ways of movement. Now, saying it is a jazz dance may spark certain expectations in what we are about to see, but one of my intentions for this piece is not only to challenge the idea of what is women beauty, but also to challenge the classiness of the dance genre. I actually had an almost all new cast of dancers and it's always fun to work with new personalities and explore new things with new people. It was challenging teaching the dancers how to really perform the item, how to bring across their personalities in the piece and how to dance and walk confidently in their heels. But overall, the dancers worked really hard and I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. I hope the dancers enjoy the process and will give their all on stage. It was easier when I didn't have to know yet. Who decides if I'm beautiful? All these questions that we women ask ourselves. 
soon enough. I will too. Is it my body? When did I start to think my freckles looked funny? Wondering if this is supposed to look like that. Too soon, probably. How to be a woman. Like this? Maybe I can try looking more like them. Just hold this feeling a little longer. Until for the first time somebody decided, I'm not in love.
related to this item. I was really excited because I, I always wanted to be in her item. I really like her style, I really like her lines. She's given us really good cues and um, really good feedback. And I think I've grown personally as a dancer in her item. This style is very um, unique. And what I like is that she incorporated the theatric like, emotions to this piece. She guides us in a sense that not everyone is the same, how our body work is all different and like, I really like the confidence she, that she gave me throughout this whole preparation. Yeah. Uh, I think this time around, uh, it was nice to have the other alumni in this item to contribute with choreography wise, like we, we gave uh, input as well. So there are some parts of the piece that you will see that are steps are by us. Uh, so there are different aspects of uh, how we are as dancers that you can see reflected in the piece. I think working with Peter in a piece this time is new because I find it a bit more of like a collaborative process. Peter has also been definitely very like helpful with in terms of um, articulating what he wishes to see, what he wants in the piece. So it's been very fun. It, it was so much easier to coordinate, I guess, because we were all students. So now come back as a working adults, I think it's quite pairing. I think most of the alumni like, just rushed out after their work and put in like 100% for all the practice. And there's also about finding like pockets of time in between yeah, your work schedule to practice for the item. But at the same time, I feel very grateful to, be, to have a platform to dance. Yes, there are a lot of challenges faced because personally, I don't have any dance background. So for us to keep up with the rest <laughs> of the dancers, uh, especially like the alumni and our seniors who had previous concert experience, it was very intimidating for me, but I've learned a lot. I think like a personal challenge for me has definitely been my technicality as a dancer. It's a lot of like drilling, the textures of the movement, the detailing. I appreciate that because I think it really pushes me out of my comfort zone and helps me to perform better. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just um, the interactions, like all these small interactions uh, outside of practice and really inside of practice as well, but both ways lah, that really bring us all together as batchmates, as a club and everything. And uh, that's the thing that I really love and my favourite memory of PA. Lah. I think one of like, the core memories that I have is in 2016, and we went to Cebu in Malaysia for the International Dance Festival. And when we came back, we had to quickly prepare for our debut. So it's like right next to each other. Yeah, I think through that whole process, even though it was very stressful and uh, tiring, but we really bonded. Um, those are the things that really stayed, even though it was very difficult. I think one of my most memorable moments with DA would definitely be seats 4. And that was the first time I set foot on the PAD stage. So it was definitely exciting and it was also like our first proper production. So yeah, I think the whole process of like planning, executing and also performing definitely made it a very memorable experience for me in DA.
I think Nature is very chill, but um, she gets her things done by the timeline. And her friends are usually very fun. Yeah. Work hard and stay hard together. I feel like Nature doesn't let the stressful timeline like affect her, so it doesn't affect the dancers. And like, yeah, it's just a very fun environment in general. I think as a dancer working with Kenneth is very comfortable because he always like gives the room for the dancers to express their thoughts. And I like the way he arranged every practice because like for example before the practice he will send the goals for the next break and the things we need to do. Then I think it will make the practice more effective and efficient to me. I think Brian as a choreographer can be very very fun. But not gonna lie, it's been quite stressful sometimes, but he knows how to make situations uh, light and fun. It's actually my fourth time doing Brian's item and it has always been a great pleasure <laughs> because like we always end our rehearsals with a lot of laughter and also of course with a lot of body aches for the next day. I feel like the use of the props this time around was quite difficult because we had to use like shrink seal which is something that most of us have not explored with right. and I feel like um, in this item we have some Chinese dance elements included as well which is also something I personally have not um, explored or tried before so getting the steps right and like the sequence and learning how to manage the Shui Siu in general was quite challenging uh, I think the most challenging part is the language barrier because I feel like sometimes I cannot get the instructions directly I, I need to process all the information and also I will sometimes feel frustrated when I cannot express myself precisely. Mm -hmm. In general, everybody's challenge is that sometimes it's hard to express the emotion. So like kind of like things about like your breath or your mm -hmm. healing and exhaling and what happens in between. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the challenge is that because it's not our usual way of breathing, yeah. so it's something that we need to practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think my favorite memory is suffering after dance break. Yeah. Like who I term or even like last time like we play with the members between uh, Elaza or McDonald's. Yeah, I've had a lot of my many years. But over the years we really like make friends with like new matches and then we build the community. And I think what's really nice about like being like in dance is that everybody always helps yeah. each other out. Like we give um, corrections and then it's the bonding, it's the fun and like the chit chats that make it <laughs> very wholesome. <laughs> <laughs>
um, I was actually quite excited at the beginning because uh, we did sits previously but it was like videos and everything there was no audience but this time there is audience and I was quite excited about this whole thing but when we are into this during and now um, it's happening to be honest it's quite overwhelming because we have not done this before like we have not performed like this before and straight away we have to take up like com roles and you know um, take over the jobs to do like finance, logs and everything but I still do enjoy the whole process and it's I feel like it's quite a nice learning process you know yeah yeah so as Sylvia mentioned we actually never done a live production before so it's definitely been quite a tough but interesting journey for us so we've had a lot to learn from our past seniors and alumni as well as our instructor Peter and Chris our top advisor and uh, we've had a lot of support from the school side including student development as well as our family and friends which is what has actually made this journey a lot more worth it yeah and I think overall we're all just really excited to be performing live once again I feel like it is a very different kind of experience because being part of comms, we don't just only have to focus on our dance, but we have a lot of things to work on behind the scenes. But then with the help of our instructors, seniors and alumni, I feel like we have learned a lot through the process. It is also very fulfilling to see how everyone's hard work paid off and I'm really excited to show what everyone has to show on stage. Okay, so there are many things that we have to do in preparation for the production. So some of the things are liaising with uh, the choreographers, the itemizes, and uh, keeping track of how much uh, the progress and keeping track of the progress of the items and how to help the dancers improve. For me, I do the planning of the productions from the start to the end. So some things include uh, preparing our e-booklet and also the design of the e-posters and also making sure that the item costumes arrived on time and also managing our social media accounts. Mm, okay, so after coming back from like a two-year break on most activities because of COVID, there's actually a lot of things that DA has planned for the for our upcoming year. So one example would be our InterVarsity Dance Exchange with the other uni contemporary clubs. So we're actually in the process of planning that now and it'll be taking place in December. December. Yeah, and we're all really excited for it because we'll get a chance to work with the other clubs as well as the other instructors and we believe that we have a lot to learn from them. Yeah, and also I'm quite excited because um, like we have not been in huge groups for like two years or more and now we get to interact with more people. Um, I feel like it's a good chance like, because rather than just staying with uh, like D8 itself, mm -hmm. ourself, um, I feel like we can go and interact with new people and um, get like different experience because I believe every club got their own culture and we can uh, you know interact and learn from each other.
gentlemen, we have come to the end of the show. Let us put our hands together to welcome our dancers back on stage. First up, introducing to you the dancers from Abyss, choreographed by Peter Teo in collaboration with the dancers. Next, we have the dancers from Talk To Me, choreographed by Viv Pua. From our third item, we have the dancers of Body, choreographed by Dana Kalember. Next, the dancers of Merc, choreographed by Misha Tay. Followed by the dancers of Finding Kumbaka. Choreographed by Kenneth Tan. Last but not least, we present to you the dancers from Procession. Choreographed by Brian Lee. Up next, let's invite the choreographers up on stage. First, our alumni choreographers, Misha Tay and Dana Kalemberg. And of course, our guest choreographers, Viv Kwa, Kenneth Tan and Brian Lee, who unfortunately cannot make it for the show. We would like to give a big shout out to Alberta Willio, our lighting designer for the wonderful lighting, our photographer Kwang Sing Kai, our videographer Roger Yeo, our stage manager Peter Teo and our assistant stage manager Mia. 
our junior team, doubling up as backstage, front of house and ushers, our dance art alumni, our club advisor Chris Yong, and not forgetting our resident instructor and also the artistic director for today's concert, Peter Teo. And finally, the team behind the production, the 12th Executive Committee of SIM Dance Art. This production would not have been possible without the support from SIM Global Education, SIM Campus Infrastructure and Operations, SIM Theatre and AD Management Team, SIM Student Development from the Student Life Division and of course, not forgetting you, our wonderful audience. This is SIM Dance Arts 8th production here at SIM Performing Arts Theatre. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did. It has been a pleasure to be your MC for the show. Thank you and have an enjoyable weekend. <laughs>